much indeed. Kiss like this. Terrific. Now, we've just about managed to get most of the £125 <laughs> that Peter Shilton has got for England on his head at the same time. Is yeah. this a first? Yeah, well, yes, I've never tried it before, actually. So. Well, it's not something that would spring to mind, I suppose, no, is no. it, really? No, these are not the exact caps, but well, they're, uh, they're a bit that. heavier than the England caps, I think. So, uh, are they? Yeah. So, well, I think so when you try it out at home yourself, it won't be quite as difficult. No, no. I think our two gorgeous assistants can probably let you let them fall well, down yes, now. Yes, well yes, yes, there we go. Whoopsie <laughs> daisy. There they go, chaps. There they go. We have got so many calls and questions lined up for you. I think we'll right. start with one on the phones, first of all, because right. we like to pick up your phone. Yeah. And this should be Katrina Openshaw. Hello? Hello. Hello, Katrina. What's your, what's your question for Peter? Ryan and I, my brother, liked, enjoyed watching Peter in the World Cup, but we would like to know what you kept in your bag that you put in the goal. <laughs> well, good morning, Katrina. I didn't get a chance to say that before you started, but um, yes, I've had a lot of letters about that, and um, I actually keep my spare pair of goalkeeping gloves in there, and uh, some some of the lads say I keep makeup as well, but that's not true. Um, <laughs> and I also try in the World Cup in particular, I try to um, take a drink out there with me, and I keep that in there because obviously it's so hot. It was so hot in Italy, and um, with all the shouting that I do on the pitch sometimes, uh, you get a bit of a dry throat. So I that's exactly what I keep in there. Oh, oh and a spare tie up just in case the tie up on my socks uh, snaps. So you don't keep biscuits, flask of coffee, something like that in there, do you? Well, um, I don't really get a chance to, to, uh, to use those sort of things. I just get a quick swig. Um. Depends who you're playing, I suppose. Yes, exactly. Well, now you know, Katrina. Thanks okay. very much for that. Now, Bye. let's go to Anna, who's sitting right here, as it happens. Anna, what's your question for Peter? If, if there's a penalty shootout, what goes through your mind in the gap between each penalty? Oh, that's... Um, well, obviously, you try to... Um, get yourself in a, in a relaxed state of mind and um, obviously you try and concentrate on what you're going to do. It's very difficult because there's a lot of tension, especially in the World Cup, uh, you know, when we had the penalties against Germany. Uh, you try and, try and guess which way it's going to go and hopefully you go the right way. I think against Germany I went the right way on each occasion but, but the penalty was just We're going good. to look at you now. Yeah. Would you like to talk us through this, Peter? Yes, I don't How know you're feeling this at this actually. moment? I think this, this might have been well, obviously, uh, as you see, you know, you, you've just got to try and, um, and guess which way it's going. I noticed in the World Cup that a lot of goalkeepers went very early for penalties and they actually wish, would sort of kick straight at them and they, the ball went in the centre of the goal. So what I tried to do, I tried to sort of stand up as long as I could and, um, and then try and go the right way. But unfortunately, every, everyone was hit too hard. I think the Germans were very good. They actually practiced their penalties very, a lot, and uh, that made a difference to them. Perhaps they were relying on ending up in that kind of situation, in fact. Well, uh, they planned so well that I think that uh, they're so thorough with their planning that I think that, that might have been something they'd even practiced. And uh, unfortunately for us, it paid off. Let's go back to the phones now. Thanks for that question. And now we have Simon Dale. Um, hi. Hello, good morning, Simon. Simon. Good morning. Hi, um, how highly do you rate Paul Gascoigne after playing alongside him in Italia 90? Well, I've always rated um, Gazza very highly. Um, obviously, he wasn't in the team leading up to the World Cup very much, and when he did get his chance, he did, he did exceptionally well. But every time I've played against him before the World Cup, he's, he's done very well. He's always been a very direct player. You know, he, he's very exciting, isn't he? He scores a lot of goals, and he's a bit of a character. But I thought in the World Cup he, he showed us all what he can do and um, obviously when he, when he started crying I think that's what people remember him for but he's, he's a very good player besides that and uh, I, I've, I've got a lot of time for Paul and uh, I think that he's, he's done very well for himself and for England. Okay. Thanks very much Thanks, Simon. Bye. bye. Bye bye. Let's go to Daniela now who's here. I like the England team but I support the Italian team because I'm half Italian. What do you think of Scalatra and Badger and the goalkeeper Zenga? Oh, well, um, I think they're all very good players, great players. Um, the, the Italian team did very well in the World Cup. Um, they beat us, unfortunately, uh, probably due to uh, a mistake by me in the first goal. But besides that, they, um, they did very well. They're very good players. Scalacci was the, the one player that I think everybody remembers. Uh, you always get in a World Cup tournament, somebody that comes through and scores a lot of goals. I don't know why. And he was the one that, uh, I mean, Gary Lineker did it in, um, in Mexico. 
and he was the one in this World Cup. And he in particular was, was the, the big name that came out of the World Cup and, and, and did very well. Is he your hero? <laughs> we could sort of tell, couldn't we? Yes. Let's go back to the phones now and we should have John Bowers. Hello, John. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, John. What's your question morning, for Peter? Peter? The question is, how do you see your role with the England coaching squad and will there be a national coaching course for goalkeepers at schoolboy level? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, well, obviously, I'm, I'm very new to the job and... Um, you know, I'm still finding my way a little bit. I, I, you know, when I'm still playing for Derby, obviously, you know, I get, only get the chance to do coaching when I'm with England. But I think that, um, you know, there is a possibility that in the future, I think there'll be more goalkeeping coaching going on because it's a very specialised position. And I certainly enjoy it very much when I'm with England. It's a little bit new for me, a little bit strange because I've, I've just finished playing. But, um, you know, to still keep in contact with the England players and to work with them is, is a great... Uh, experience and I hope that um, you know there will be more goalkeeping courses I think probably when I finish playing uh, which I hope will be a few years yet but I, I, I probably will myself uh, get into that side of things a little bit more and um, try and develop it so I hope that the, in the future you, you know to answer your question that uh, there will be more goalkeeping courses okay thanks very much thank you bye bye we have got so many questions, so many <coughs> calls still coming in for you, Peter. We just haven't got time to take them all because you have brought in a smashing prize. You have a competition question, I know. Let's have a look at the prize first of all, and then if you ask the question. We've got, look at this. Yes. A ball. Yes, socks, obviously a ball, bag. yes. What's inside the bag? Uh, well, I haven't had a chance to look yet, sir, <laughs> but uh, oh nothing. Well, you might have your... You might have your... <laughs> There's a lot of cellophane in there at the moment, but... But I'm, uh, I'm sure that there will be something in That's there eventually. Right. Thank you very much. Trick question. <laughs> trick, trick question, actually, Peter. Yes. I thought you'd have your flask, you know, what you were saying you had in your bag in the corner of the... Yes. The, the net. Yes, yes. You uh, didn't. Or your I rice pudding. There is pudding? rice pudding, yes. Rice That's pudding? A, That's a very interesting prize, actually, because... Um, it is. The rice pudding <laughs> situation is that uh, in the World Cup, it's been one of my favourite things, actually, rice pudding. Believe it or not, you know, I've always had rice pudding before a match. And people laugh when I tell them that, but it's very true. Well, I think it does you a lot of good. I Did think you used so. to eat at school that horrible rice pudding with a lot of jam in the middle? Do you all still get that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you yeah. like it? No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, what's the question to win the rice pudding, right. the ball, the bag, whatever, the cellophane, and the socks? Well, um, I've won 125 caps for England. Um, uh, what was the actual game I won my first cap in, and on what, what date was that match played? Okay, the exact date you want. Yes, the exact date. The exact date you got your very the first, first England cap. England cap. Okay, yeah. Peter, thanks very much. Are you going to be playing an international farewell match at all? Well, there's um, there's a possibility. I think there's a, a group of people who are going to try and organise a game uh, for me, a farewell England game against some of the top players in Europe, and hopefully uh, it'll come off because it'd be a great night for football and obviously. It'd be a great oh, well, night for me as well. A terrific so night for you. And I'll one keep my fingers crossed. Richly deserved. Thanks so much for coming in this morning, Peter. Thank you, Sarah. Put your answers to Peter's question on a postcard, please, and send it to Going Live, BBC TV, London, W12 7RJ. Now for something completely different.